hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to look at how we can add exhaust gas recirculation to your engine model. In front of you, you will see a one cylinder spark ignition engine. And I'm going to first show you a very basic way to add EGR to your engine. And then we will move on to a more complex method. EGR reduces the combustion temperature, which ultimately reduces your NOx emissions at the tailpipe. Now, the first thing we need to do is activate our NOx emissions model. So we're going to head over to our model properties and we're going to add a passive, passive scalar, which is NO with a molecular weight of 30.0061 grams per mole. Once that's added, we can click on the cylinder block and we head on over to sub models and we will add an emissions model by clicking the green plus button. We will edit it clicking on our little pencil button and we click on the NOx emissions model, which we activate. And you will see there, we just need to select NO, which is our passive scalar, which we've created in the model properties. All right, so our NOx emissions model is set up. Next thing we need to do is now create a way to indicate to the model how much percentage of exhaust is being recirculated into the intake air. Now, the very basic model is we can actually go and already introduce exhaust gas in our ambient object. You will see here at the bottom, we've got fluid composition, which is default as air. Now we can go and add a different fluid composition. So we add it and we edit it. And you can see the species here is shown as one for fresh air. That just means that 100% of the air that's going from the ambient block to our inlet manifold will be fresh air. Now we can change this by saying, all right, it's fresh air, 100% fresh air minus the percentage of exhaust gas that we want to introduce. And we're going to use a variable that we can change. So we're just going to say fresh air equals my uh, equals one minus EGR underscore fraction. And if we press enter, Ricardo wave will prompt us to add this variable to our variables list. For now, we're going to keep it as zero. So we're just going to say add. And then similarly, our burnt air and our burnt fuel fractions need to be increased because we have in, we are introducing exhaust gas that has burnt air and burnt fuel components to it as well. So we're going to change our burnt air from zero to this equation here, which takes into account our air fuel ratio. Similarly to our burnt fuel, we've got another equation that calculates that, which is a function of our exhaust gas recirculation fraction and our air fuel ratio. And now that is set up to introduce exhaust gas already from our ambient in element block. Now, if we head on over to our cases table, you will see our EGR fraction value variable has been added and it is zero. Now we want to see what happens if we increase our EGR fraction from 0% to say about 25%. And we can do that by adding cases where the EGR fraction variables value changes with each case. Now we can go and we can press on this little sweep button, which will generate these cases for us and change the EGR fraction value accordingly. So for parameter, we're just going to change that to EGR fraction and it's going to be from, from zero to 0 0.24, which equates to 24%. And we are going to just have nine cases and you can see I've selected to replace the selected cases. So it will delete our current case one and create nine cases where our EGR fraction varies from 0% for case one, start off at 0% EGR to 24% EGR at case nine. So if I press OK now, we have nine cases in our table and you can see the values of the EGR fraction is changing with each case. Now, after that's done, we can run our model and you will see here at the left bottom, you can see a graph created for the NOx concentration for each case. Now, I don't want to look at them all individually. I want to look at them all on one graph. So I can go and I go add a graph and I want a time plot. And now we can add some data, some wave data, and I'm going to select all nine cases. And I want to look at the passive scalar NO. I press OK. And here we can see the NOx concentration for each case. So case one, which was in blue, we had an EGR percentage of 0%. And for case nine, which is light blue here at the bottom, we had 24% EGR. And you can clearly see as the EGR percentage is increasing, our NOx emissions is decreasing as a result. 
We can also add a sweep plot. The values on the y-axis will be our NOx emissions. And on the x-axis, we will have our EGR fraction variable. And here again, you can nicely see how our NOx emissions decreases as we increase EGR percentage. Now, this example was very basic where we sort of assumed that all the intake air already has exhaust gas included in it. Obviously, in a real case scenario, this is not the case. The air that enters the engine does not have exhaust gas included. It only comes at a later stage in the intake manifold. So to go and make it a bit more realistic, we can add additional airways from the exhaust manifold to our inlet manifold with a valve that will go and control the percentage of EGR that is introduced into the intake air. Now I'm going to alter this engine model by adding some piping that takes exhaust air and goes through an orifice and reintroduces the exhaust air in the inlet manifold. Now this is a bit more realistic approach where exhaust gas is diverted from the exhaust manifold. It goes through some valve. I'm just going to simulate it as an orifice and I'm going to change the diameter, which will simulate a valve like behavior. And then the exhaust gas is reintroduced in the intake airflow. Now I want to control the amount of EGR being reintroduced into the intake airflow and I can do that by varying this orifice's diameter. Now you can see it's currently set at 30 millimeters which is the diameters of the two adjacent pipes. Now as I decrease this diameter the flow through the orifice will decrease as well and ultimately that will decrease the flow of exhaust gas being reintroduced in the intake manifold. Now I want to control this diameter di dynamically and to do that, I'm going to need a PID controller. Together with the PID controller, I need to go and create a function that will calculate the percentage of current EGR in the intake manifold. And to do that, I'm going to use this equation. So let's set up the PID system now. So here you will see two sensors. We've got our flow sensor, which measures the mass airflow of fresh air coming into the system. Then we have a sensor here at the bottom, which again is a flow sensor that measures the flow of exhaust gas being diverted back to the inlet flow. We have an actuator that will change the diameter of our orifice. We have a PID controller and we have a function block. Now this function block takes as input the mass flows of the fresh air and the exhaust gas. And then I've gone and programmed the equation that I showed earlier into the expression box. So this function object will then calculate the current EGR percentage in the intake air. It will feed it to the PID controller and the PID controller will change the diameter of the orifice accordingly to get to the target EGR that I will specify in my constants table. You will see when I click on the PID block, we put a maximum value of 30 millimeters and my target value will be again, the same variable that I used in the more simplistic example, which is our EGR fraction. Now, if you know what your proportional value and your integral value and your derivative value needs to be for the PID controller to quickly respond to the changes in the current EGR values, then you can input them there. I obviously don't know it. I need to calibrate my PID controller. Now the PID calibration can't be done here. It needs to be done in wave build. So I'm going to switch over to wave build now. And here we have our wave build model, exactly the same as the previous one. It's just a different user interface. And we click on our PID controller and you can see our target is our EGR fraction variable. We've got a maximum of 30 millimeters and we are interested in calibrating our PID controller. So we click that. We add our variables for our proportional integral and derivative values. And I am only interested in my case one. I'm going to change that to four steps. It's going to sweep from between zero millimeters for diameter for the orifice to 30 millimeters, which is the maximum diameter. I'm going to say run input sweep. And it gives me this nice graph which shows that the response is not completely linear but it is good enough for me. After this graph has been generated we go and we say run step response and it calculates our different variables which you can see here is our proportional integral values we do not have a derivative value and it looks like it is converging quite quickly which is great. So after you've done that, we can just say OK, and it will apply all the variables to our constant table. And here you will see our three variables for our PID controller. Our EGL fraction here is 5%. So let's add another case 
with a, with a bit of a higher EGR fraction. If we add another case, it will copy over all the data from the first case. And we are only going to change our EGR fraction to 0 0.2, uh, 0.3, which is 30%. So case one is 5% EGR and case two is 30% EGR. And we say, okay. And now this PID controller will change the orifice diameter accordingly to achieve a 5% EGR and a 30% EGR for this engine model. So we can press run. And when we head over to wave post, we can add another time sweep graph and we can add some wave data, two cases. I'm interested in the NOx concentration. And you can clearly see case number one, which was 5% EGR has got a much higher NOx concentration compared to case two, which has got 30% EGR, which has just got about under a thousand parts per million of NOx. And that's it. That is how you go and add exhaust gas recirculation to your engine model. There's a simplistic way and a much more realistic, more complex way of doing it. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, please do drop them in the comment section below. You can also connect with me on Twitter and LinkedIn and ask your questions there. I, I hope you've enjoyed this content and I will see you in the next video. Bye.